Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca and this is the Vaughn Velocity V10 pad review. Already done videos on the blocker and the catching glove. We linked it in the description as well at the end of this video. So this review and the whole set wouldn't have happened without the help of Just Hockey in Toronto. So check out them. The links to their Instagram. They have Just Hockey, Just Goalie, as well as their store is in the description. Uh, make a purchase with them. They're a great hockey store. I dealt with them before I started doing stuff with this with them. They're awesome to deal with. So check them out and then let them know you came from me. It'd be greatly appreciated. Like I said, I wouldn't be able to do all these tests as well as like the thigh rise tests and bring these on the ice if it wasn't for just hockey. So they helped me out. It'd be greatly appreciated if you go towards them and let them know that is useful for them as well. As most people should know, and you can always see it in the hilarious comments, velocity pads are not my cup of tea. They're not what I would pick out. This pad technically should be what I would pick out with my custom specs. It's close to what I would choose. I'm more of a stiff and straight pad goalie, but the V10 is doing something pretty interesting. And if you saw the thigh rise test video, which you should definitely watch before you watch this, this has changed a lot and it is pretty impressive to be totally honest. So we're going to kind of dive into this and compare it directly to these SLR threes. I figured this would be a good one to kind of show you the differences and that way you can choose between which one you like. Although these are very custom, generally the strapping and everything is the same and kind of how they fit is the same to retail. So this will be a good comparison in that set. Before we jump into the review of these pads, Core Tech, which are core shorts and people have heard of these before. They were labeled under Under Armour before. Now Bauer sells hockey specific one, but Core themselves sell their own line of pants and supportive clothing and apparel. Basically this stuff helps you with growing strains, growing pulls and helps keep your hips tight and everything like that. And speaking of injuries, I kind of pulled a growing playing in the playoffs a few months ago and have had to keep using these Cortec shorts to make sure my growing doesn't get worse. When I don't wear them, I can feel it and it hurts kind of to walk the next day with these. Keeps everything nice and tight and keeps everything from stretching out too far and getting injured. So these have been a huge savior for me. Check out the link in the description to their website and use my coupon code that's in there to get a discount and I'll put it on the screen here. It helps support myself and the channel so I can make content and doing real reviews, but also you get a solid product that I use all the time and basically am needed in order to keep my growing from falling apart. Otherwise, if you wanna support the channel without buying anything, check out the links in the description to Patreon and buy me a coffee. Everything through those links always comes back into the channel so I can keep making more content and doing more reviews. So first off, I always talk about this right away, I'm going to just mention a little bit right here. These are uh, the same size pads. So both of these are 34 plus two, but they don't fit the same at all. So I'm gonna have a different section in here later on where we go over the boot shape because the boot shape on this really affects the sizing of the pad and especially compared to this one. So I'll just do this as a spoiler anyways, these pads are too big for me. And so if you look at these two pads sitting next to each other, you're like, wow, how, how are these pads too big when this pad is taller? Well, it's all that boot shape. So it's how this pad sits on your boot and how that all plays. So these pads were too big for me. So obviously when using them, there's a bit of a struggle, but I have a pretty good idea of how they would play if I could manage to get the right size on them. But for me, a 34 plus two on these didn't fit. I'd probably have to go to a 33 plus two or a 33 plus three to make them fit close to what I like and how that plays. So here is also kind of like that sizing difference on the SLR three versus the V10s. Again, both 34 plus twos. And you can definitely see where my knee is landing so much lower. So on these, it's kind of at the top, just sitting here. And obviously sitting like this isn't the perfect idea. You have to drop, but this gives you an idea of just how much like lower these sit on the skates compared to this one where my knee is way down there. And this one, my knee is right up there. So this is the part that's causing the sizing issues. And you can see how much higher this knee block is compared to the SLR3. Now, if I pull this up, I can make it closer, but that's not how the pad sits on my leg. It goes down there where this one, I can't really pull it down because of that boot shape. So it kind of gets stuck there and this pad ends up being a bit too big for me. So these both are 34 plus two pads and you can see the difference in my knee landing area. I always land at the bottom of this or off the bottom of this where this one, the SLR, I fit totally fine and totally good. That is because of the boot design on these V10s where it's so flat, it's the pad just coming up so much on my skate. I would basically need a heel strap, which these don't have, to kind of put my 
knees where it should be, which is right here. But when I keep dropping, it's really at the bottom. And obviously, so sizing there is wrong. And this, I would need a 33 plus two on this basically, or a 33 plus three, but that is the difference on here. These ones fit me totally fine. They're 34 plus twos. These 34 plus twos are too big. Now starting this off with the part that's always really fun, the thigh rise, well, I guess the whole overall pad flex. So first of all, the boot, isn't that soft it's not hard it's not like bauer supreme hard where it doesn't move or old reebok or ccm premieres where the boot doesn't move it still has some flex to it but it doesn't have a lot it's nowhere near like the hyperlight pads it's nowhere near a lot of pads i've used recently where that boot flex like warriors for example really flexes with you a lot so it doesn't really flex all that much you can really push it down it will but it really doesn't that's kind of the whole new boot design on here and again we'll talk about that in a little bit it's not really the idea of these pads is for this boot to be totally connected to your skate and to flex with your skate. You can see the boot flex on the uh, SLR threes here is actually kind of softer than what it is on the V10s. So the V10s really doesn't move as much as what this one does, as you can see like this, this one actually does kind of compress there up more than what on that is. This V10 feels a lot more similar to a pair of Jones V8s. I tried on way back when and tested those out and then this feels pretty close to that. It's a lot stiffer than what you kind of normally expect in a velocity pad. And so now that you saw that, we're going on to the next part, which if you saw the thigh rise tests, which again, you should, you'll have no surprise by this, but the thigh rise is stiff. Now, look at that. That's me really pushing down on this and this is stiff. This is gonna break down and get softer and softer over time. These pads have gotten a lot softer than the first day I had them. So this is gonna happen with this as well. And this pad does have like a break here. Like this still breaks. You can see that part moving. So you can, you can break that in more and more. And I noticed on the thigh rise test, this part is a part that is moving when pucks hit it too. So this part will definitely break in and allow you to kind of bend this knee part down a lot more. Cause I know that's what people are kind of looking for in the velocity line. But the big thing here is that thigh rise difference. Look how stiff that is. And this is a stock stiffness. This pad wasn't ordered with a stiffer thigh rise than what is stock. Some stores like Just Hockey have Just Hockey spec gear, which is gear that is made with some upgrades or changes, which kind of match, they find their customers most want. And honestly, in my experience, Just Hockey spec gear is usually the ones you want. Anyways, one of the things they used to do with Bond stuff is kind of stiffen the thigh rise. Here, this is stock. And this is very, very impressive. So remember this, and then compare it to my as stiff as possible uh, SLR3s. Remember, I ordered these to be as stiff as possible. And these are softer than the V10s. These are also used though. So I have to give these a little bit more of a leeway on there because I have used these pads quite a bit and they have broken down a little bit just through use that happens. But the V10s and the stiffness on them is pretty impressive and that's not a bad thing at all the way that this pad is made especially down here and kind of like the whole core of it you still get a softer feeling pad but you get that thigh rise rigidity that you need to stop pucks and that will stop pucks and that will last longer and we'll show this actual core stiffness later on too which is also very very impressive but this will also kind of right here show you a difference just in the shape profile now again these are custom where i ordered them like as stiff as possible and as well these come stock straight like this but the stock ones are so soft and if you don't know haven't seen how soft the stock ones are look at my slr3 video uh, the stock ones are so soft that they're going to curve a lot like just from store people flexing on them and from use where these ones you can see that shape on there it kind of gives you a bit of that curve to begin with so next we're going to talk about the most important part of this set and that is the graphics i absolutely love these graphics i know these were kind of controversial when they came out and still came out especially if you check the facebook groups and stuff and people complaining but i think vaughn did an excellent job on these especially because kind of everything lines up nicely and you can kind of just match everything pretty nice overall with that said these don't match the pads exactly this should be black on here and it's white on there, but you can do that as an option. Like it's, you can make the match better than what this is. It's, this is just a custom colorway for this demo set. But I wanna call out why I think this stuff looks really good and they did a good job on here. I'm a huge fan of like section blocking and able to do like big parts of the pad in specific colors to make it kind of clean, but less crazy in overall graphics. This pad kind of bothered me a lot because this little pink piece, you couldn't really do anything with it. Didn't have the ability, like I would have liked to get rid of that 
all together or make this whole piece pink and you just couldn't do that so you didn't really have the ability to make things kind of clean as clean as i wanted them to with this you definitely do because of in my opinion this excellent design where you have this is all one section this is all one section this is all one section and then this part is another section now this gets a little weird in case you want this to be a different color because this is kind of obviously going there right but as a whole i like how you can really separate this pad and block off this pad if you want it to be relatively clean where it's just the inside you can have this section done up and then this section done up and then these aren't like this isn't separating it and being too kind of out there it still separates it but it's not crazy and you can just leave these all in neutral tone or if you just want to do like opposites like both just this and this done up would look really good or if you want to do like just that's a color and all these match i like the ability to really kind of separate it and to do interesting pieces like that now i do wish this and this piece were separate but that's a lot more cutting on there so i understand why they're not but that would make it kind of interesting in that sense i also love how vaughn offers custom graphics but i don't like how they have to like wait a year to do it so if you wanted your pulse graphic or like a v4 graphic or if you wanted the famous like iceberg graphics you can't do it until a year after it's out so that's kind of frustrating to some people i don't think that should really be a limit i get why it is because they want people showing off like their new graphic and everything the first year it's just to me it's just kind of annoying and limiting and i don't really feel like that is totally necessary so when we get to the face of the pad obviously the first big thing is these knee rolls which are just not existent on the slr and are very much prevalent on the v tens and when we look at them they are a little bit soft as you can see but they're not like the old stuffed knee rolls where they're really rounded and do they have any kind of usage they're just on top of the actual build because you can see how it looks like there but you can see they're a little bit softer and then also onto kind of the face of the pad and one of the big differences is the face is actually a lot softer and it's like the most dead rebounding pad that I have used ever probably. But these, it's just so dead in here. And this is like, it doesn't really feel super soft and squishy, but it does definitely feel a lot softer than a bunch of other companies. Like this, you can really tell how much softer it is up here compared to down here, but it is still softer. And these pads by all means were not a like big rebounding pad. It's a little bit bigger rebounds than what is on these v10s now also speaking of the v10s though and those rebounds if you get a hard shot off the shin it's still going to be a pretty big rebound it depends on how hard it is a lot of the rebounds will die a lot closer like tips stuff like that that aren't direct like slap shots they die a lot quicker than anything else but if you do get a big one off the shin it still kind of fires out it's just not nearly as much as the competition does and that's kind of the point of these people still want that softer pad face and you definitely get that here now the other part on this that is very different and i think the best way to show it off is by going off on the tips is the outer roll so you can see the slr has this triangular outer roll but it's pretty thin overall whereas the v10 has a thicker traditional square roll through it but it's not super crazy thick it's not like that max thickness that you see on the warrior pads for that cover edge it's still there but it's actually pretty minimal when you look at the slr3 you can see the difference on this both of these pads do have the cord that goes through the face none on the top of the thigh rise here just right here and on the boot right here as well interesting thing about this pad is none right here you do have it on the boot and they actually do two different cord colors so you can see this is black this is white same with up here cord 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 matching for the graphic itself and on the back same thing so kind of interesting that was a thing i love that attention to detail from them and when we go on this side you can kind of see it as well they're not a big difference overall in that outer height so you don't get that whole cover edge idea that warrior talks about on here but you still get the look of a traditional roll and a traditional roll just slimmed down a bit so we're gonna start with just the thickness of the overall shape of the pad here and you can see they're actually pretty similar to each other it has been thinned out a lot compared to like previous velocity pads and it but it's thicker when you get lower but the interesting thing is on the inside you can feel that outer kind of strengthening part like right here you can feel the hard dense foams right here that kind of go along here you can kind of feel it right in there which is kind of interesting and it obviously goes right there too where this is all kind of a flat back design but you see the thickness difference here you get a little bit thicker on here on the velocity compared to the slr and then when you go lower you can see it's kind of the opposite direction where the slr is a lot thicker than what is on 
the velocity there. So this one will fit more kind of following your leg where this one kind of kicks out and the thigh rise kind of pushes up more. This one, again, just kind of follows with your body more. And when we go on to the boot, you can see how much thicker this one is compared to this one. This one does kind of have a channel in it. So this is like your foot can sit in this. We'll talk about that in a bit more where this one is a lot flatter. And you can just see the overall shape kind of difference too. When we line these up, this one does like kind of look like it's steeper, but with the inner pad design in here, it kind of plays a bit different. Another part of these pads I find is pretty interesting is this pad has the binding all the way through. So it is that more traditional design where SLR did this interesting half and half. So a lot of companies are going to pure binding lists on the outside. This has a binding that goes through here, which is kind of interesting, then all the way down here. So kind of interesting that they did that. This is pretty unique in that sense where the whole top is binding this and like a lot of other companies pads now, but still has that binding on there. Pretty unique take on things. And I'm kind of a fan of it, to be honest. Looking at the sliding edge here is where these pads really differ from each other. And you can see everything above this knee block right here is a pretty big difference. I figured that they would go to a one, either a two piece thing. So it'd be separate here and just be one all the way up or just a one piece in general, because this pad, when it is, the super flexible like stock one. This bends totally fine being all one piece here. It's interesting that they decide to keep this separate and kind of keep with the more traditional velocity design, which is totally fine. The materials on here are kind of similar in terms of densities through here, obviously one piece, but densities all throughout here. It's like not the craziest thing. So it's not as hard as like a Bauer pad or even like trues, but it is a decently dense enough foam that it does a good job sliding and keep and being like relatively stable. You can see the difference in knee blocks here too, where this has that sewn piece and this is just a single piece here. Also at the top of here, it's still, it also has that big chunk piece right here where you can really feel the foams back here. So they don't pad this out at all where this one, it's totally flat all the way through this one. You can really feel that inner foam that's being like made up of right here and how dense that foam is, which is kind of interesting. Now, when we go on to knee blocks, you can see how this has the binding through it here. This one does not. And this one has the more uh, angled block right here where this one kind of the full size right here with both have that extra bump at the, kind of for stability and everything. Now going back onto this side wing here, they both have kind of similar design here, but you can see that the SLR is bigger overall. So it has more surface area right here. This one does have that uh, binding through here and the gap here. So in NHL specs, you do need a gap right here. I'm not sure if this can like would be considered enough of gapping. I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure I've seen SLR ones with the cord kind of running through here on the pro NHL ones, but this is more of that NHL design and it does have that separation. Now the difference between these blocks is this foam is a lot more dense than this foam. So you can see when we look here, that is more dense than what this is. This is super soft. This is a lot more dense in that sense. So that will give you more stability and control there with your leg because it won't allow it to kind of form around your leg, which I've noticed a lot in this pad. So it is a lot better in terms of how that is made up. So now we get onto the boot and you have a similar design here in terms of the actual sliding edge. You can also see some bindings over here and we kind of ignore them up top, but it's not in a sliding area. So it should never really touch the ice. It is kind of recessed from here where there is none up here at all. But when you get down here, you can see a little bit of binding here, like a little bit more than what is on this one. There is some wear on mine. So this will definitely have some wear points to it just because it's not really regressed back here. This probably could go up a little higher. So I'm a little bit disappointed in that just because this will, again, that will be a wear piece. You can, it won't be awful, but it will be there. And this quick slide material definitely is more durable than what this nylon will be. So it would have been nice to kind of bring that up more. And the shape is pretty similar between the two, as you can kind of see right there. And overall you have, you have a little bit more of an angle on the V10s and the, the SLR is a little straighter from that, but pretty square overall shape with a little bit of a round kind of cut out there, but nothing crazy, but it's not also super square like we've seen on some other pad. Post seal and like RVH seal is actually pretty good on this pad. You can see the top coming up a little bit and that's more or less just because this curved shape is doing that. But everything down here is pretty well sealed and a lot better than what was on the SLR3. So kind of big improvements in regards to that on this pad compared to the other line and you saw the thigh rise test and everything how that works this is obviously stiffer than what the other one is and you can like this doesn't feel like it's really getting in the way whereas some other pads like when they're stiff pretty stiff or a lot stiffer than this in the core and everything this kind of feels like it, the pads really getting in the way but this feels pretty good everywhere and you can really see that boot seal which is really good especially if like you really lean over 
like it's just starting to come off now but the pads flexing enough with it so that's those people who are really mobile and who are kind of like the athletic style goalies like quick who are all over the place really leaning into things this really works well for that now we get on to the toe ties and these are my actual aftermarket toe ties so we'll ignore those the toe ties on this one actually are the exact same as what was on this one as well there are different options for this this is obviously the gen pro one so it just has a piece here velcros like that and you have kind of a covered elastic cord i'm totally fine with this i this design is pretty good these are have been sliding through pretty good on my pads where i had some issues with some companies before that have like grommets this was totally fine and it's totally acceptable much better than their old clip version this is a lot lot better than that so this toe tie does have adjustable piece so it's offset or centered you can get different options of these and i've always just worn it as stock which they just put as an offset and i've never had really any issues going back and forth between offset and non-offset some of my pads are normal straight some are over here i don't really have an issue going back and forth but you do have that option there now here is the huge difference between these two pads and that is the boot design so interestingly enough when Mackenzie Blackwood was wearing SLR2s. They were kind of a Frankenstein pad. This was basically the boot that he was wearing, or very, very close to it. It's extremely flat and shallow. You can see how it basically has no inner like movement in there. It's just totally flat. Whereas this boot, and which I thought that those his SLR2s were kind of like prototypes of this, is a lot more defined, and you can see how much more space there is in here. You can see how much your skate can kind of fit in there. This obviously still comes out a bit, but this sits a lot like lower on the skate than what that does. And your skate fits in here a lot easier because it does have that defined channel and even on the edges. So you can see how it does have the bump. The channel right here is still like deeper than what this is where this one is totally flat. Now the, this is also padded a lot more than what this one is, but it's no real issue because it's just on the top of your skate anyways. So it's not like it's really gonna make a huge difference overall. One thing I absolutely love about this design is the hidden uh, cord. So that cord right there is hidden behind this with zero seams. The seam is obviously pulled in here. There's some stitching right here, but that should be fine. But the actual seam right here is hidden as well. This is great because this is where your skate is gonna wear on a lot. This is where a lot of your skate is gonna be moving back and forth and everything, where this is on the outside. So generally speaking, your skates could be angled down here and this is totally fine to be exposed. Now, obviously I had no wear issues with this pad in this design, but these cords are a lot more exposed here and touching your skates and stuff over here where it's kind of hidden in this channel. So interesting way that they decided to like cover and protect this cord because i have had issues with bower pads in the past where this cord gets like shredded because of skates so very nice design there post integration is like it's okay and this is a super flat boot because of how like kind of short that boot is compared to like the slr it doesn't easily easily seal the post compared to like that slr and some other designs and you can see how it kind of sits in there like this i haven't had the most success i have to say when using this to get that like toe in the right spot. I usually hit the skate or end up kind of like this. And it's harder for me to get that perfect spot in there, but it's not the best, but it's also not the worst. And that flat boot will kind of help, especially you put slack in that. So if I put like a little piece of skate lace at the very tip, my skate will come off a little bit more and it would definitely give you more slack in terms of that. And so we'd be able to kind of integrate a little bit better there, but going this way, it's pretty solid and you can see like there is a gap here, but it's so small because this isn't a super huge piece right there, but that does seal pretty well. Hopefully it's kind of on camera and showing. And that's kind of the other way to do that post integration. So if you jam like this, you have a pretty decent seal overall. Now I totally understand why companies are going to this boot design. It's like True has done it. A lot of companies have done it where it's just totally flat. Brian's is now a lot flatter. CCM I think is a lot flatter on like the axis and stuff. And I get it. This is based on pro feedback and based on, well, okay, it's also based on like modern goaltending feedback, but a big reason for this is pros. You want less depth here as possible. You want it to sit as high on the skate as possible. The more you get on skate, the more you get it floating up your leg, the more thigh rise coverage you get. I could wear this pad in a 33-3 or a 33-2 or maybe even a 32-3. That's how crazy this knee block fits compared to what I'm used to because this is like a 34. I get why this is a thing. I am who is six foot three can wear a 33-3 pad. It means I get more thigh rise in the whole length of the pad. Or if I'm even in a 32 
three, two, that pad's sliding up. So I still get more coverage there on a smaller overall pad. NHL legal requirements, there's reasons for that, right? But with that said, I don't like this boot design, especially for this pad. This pad is feels like it's more aimed at the goalie who wants that softer feeling overall pad, which it is, the dead end rebounds. So it feels to me, they don't want that pad kind of doing that whole thigh rise coverage thing. They want something more squishy, something they're more used to. This boot design right here, I feel like should be on here this pad and I feel like this boot should be on this pad. Now I have a feeling the SLR4 will have a boot more similar to this. I really think this boot should have just carried over to what this is. You can change the shape if you want, but this overall design I feel like is more angled towards who a velocity user is. And I get why you bring that down on retail too, but I think it's kind of missing its target audience a little bit with that. And if you've worn this and you've worn ones in the past, let me know how you feel about that boot going to get on to strapping and kind of how this inner channel and everything works. So this pad does not have a bootstrap. As you can see, it's just totally open. I wish it did. It would have helped me with some of my sizing issues on this pad, but this pad does have that option. So it has this clip right here and this is the bootstrap. So it was a stretchy one. You can get these put on here. It's an option to add it. Just their custom set didn't have that set there. Now we get on to kind of the calf and everything in here and We'll see kind of some similar things right here, but overall very different idea, especially how tight everything is. And when we open this up, you can definitely see a big difference in materials. I think I got these custom though. I think this might've been something different. I just wanted nylon all through here. So I can't remember what stock is, but I, I went for nylon throughout the whole kind of thing to be as simple as possible. Where this one has this nice gray Nash, which is on the boot here and on the knee going through here, but nice and padded, as you can see on this, very padded. Same with here, but that was that Nash right there. Now, when we look into here as well, you can see the outer calf wing is kind of similar, but this one, just everything in here is a lot tighter overall than what this one is. This one, you can wear a lot more loosely and you can kind of see right here how that is so far away from this edge where this one is inside basically the edge. So it's a lot tighter here. And when we go into strapping, this has something that very much reminds me of an FRS system. And Vod might not be happy me saying that, but a lot of companies have seen that true FRS system and kind of made their own versions of it or kind of done something similar. This feels pretty similar to that. Now they have two options for it though. They have one right here. So this unvelcros like this and the other side does, you can pull it out. They have one on the inside, one on the outside. So you can adjust if you want it on the inner wrap or the outer wrap, obviously one's gonna be tighter than the other. You can see this one is adjusted for the outer wrap there. And then the way you do that, you go in here, you put it in there and I'll do this as a demonstration. And obviously it's tight and there's your live channel. And this is the part that really got me and I really wish Vaughn did differently. Before we get to that, we'll kind of compare it to what's on this one. So this pad doesn't have an inner one up here. It does have one right here. So there was a strap that went here and back to here. I took it off just because I like these pads wearing really loose. So I removed that one, but there is one right there as well. They both have the same strap right here that goes from here right to here. This one is connected to this wing right here. So you can kind of see it pulling there. And then it's also tied into this piece right here. So this piece right here, again, connected to the same tied right there. But then that calf wing is kind of thinner than what this one is. This one is pretty plush and pretty soft with this piece having a harder piece right here, but it does have little holes in it for venting, I'm assuming weight. So that one's a lot more plush than what this one is, but this one does have that inner layer to kind of make up for it. So you have basically this thickness versus this, and it's, it's kind of pretty close, but I would give it a little bit more thickness in here. Definitely wears tighter overall though, as well compared to what this is. Now the other strap that's in here that I took out is the their rotation control straps, professor straps. Obviously this ties in like this and you would do it up like here, you adjust up and down and then it goes in there. I don't need a rotation control strap or professor strap to pull the pad up, this one up at all. And I like wearing my pads very loose. So that came out on mine. It's not on this one's stock. You, It's an option with Vonda. You can get those in if you really wanted to. But now we're gonna go back to these straps and talk about these and how I think they're kind of like the FRS system, especially with here, the way that these felt, and when I wore them, I wore them on the outside and on the inside, and they're just, one, they're just too tight, but the way they felt, everything on here really felt like they're just trying to pull the pad up a lot, keep the pad like rising up and up and up, and that's same with this boot. This boot really promotes the pad coming up and on sitting on top of your skate, but also like coming up, where if I had that boot strap, it helped pull it down. It's pretty smart because you do have 
if you put it like this way, you have this part kind of really wrapping your leg. This piece ends up being pretty tight and I'm not the skinniest person, but I'm not fattest person either. And putting this on, this was so tight in my leg that it was like sliding up a lot and I wore it as loose as possible. I basically wore it like this and it still felt tight. And again, I tried it on the inside and outside and I just could never get these like as loose as I wanted to. And I didn't want them really to be there. So I ended up actually wearing these for the last run without these on at all to try to get it as loose as possible. So this is one of my complaints to these pads as well. I really wish there was more of this Velcro or these straps were just way longer because I couldn't, like I would like to attach them basically like this, but I couldn't, I would have to go up here and then it would just be too tight. And then even when I tried to adjust this, like this, so it was on like the very edge, it was still just too tight to be worn on my legs. So that was a disappointing part for me in there. And I really wish that these either had like extender pieces on it or something, or like they just were longer overall. And more of this was like the, uh, soft Velcro, like kind of going all the way through. So you could do that. Now I'm assuming they want some of that like more flex. So that's why that's not all just soft Velcro there, but I just couldn't get these straps to be as loose as I wanted to. And it was disappointing in that sense. The other thing I have to say that really bothers me about these, and I don't really know of a way around it. I kind of feel like something like this would be more useful and less annoying, but these aren't always the greatest things either. You have to like do this up every time. So in order to get your leg in, you have to wrap this around, put it in here and then go like this. It's just kind of annoying. And it's annoying because you can't really do this with the pads sitting down there to get in there. So if you're wearing goalie pants already, which you are, you're putting your pads on and you're, you have to like reach down way into here, put this on, like wrap this around, which was finicky, do and do it up. The doing up isn't the annoying part, but just getting it around these things was kind of annoying. And again, this is a nitpick, but it's just like, I don't like these pieces being so deep in here. One, I do wish there was an option to put them out here, but then you'd get a looser overall fit. So I get why they're in here. It's kind of one of the things about the velocities. It's kind of being tight fitting in a softer pad. So I understand why this is here. I just wish there was a way to kind of like, this is just annoying to get to. And I almost wish it was like kind of reversed, but even then this would be really annoying to get to. So I'm not positive the best way to get around this. Instead of this just being a belt, like a buckle loop here, you could just have it like coming up like this and then kind of change this. So instead of this wrapping around, it just coming up and just kind of sticking like that instead. So that way you wouldn't have to wrap it around. So that's an, obviously a nitpick on my end of things, but I want to call that out just because it was really annoying to use. So one thing that has been kind of showing up on pads a lot too is calf pillows and Vaughn doesn't really have that. I'm sure if you ought wanted to like say, Hey, put a pillow in here as well. Vaughn might do it for like an upcharge for a custom thing. But I want to just call out like what this design is. Cause we'll see that calf pillows and everything on all other pads. This doesn't have it, but it does have this really kind of thicker, padded piece here. Wearing this though, it didn't really feel like it had a calf pillow. But just because of how open this leg channel is, you didn't really feel it there. Same thing with this. Wearing this, I never felt like I had that calf pillow. And just the way the straps all work, it really kept your pad like tight to your leg. So it kind of mitigates a use of a calf pillow then as well, because you kind of want it to be looser. So it kind of droops down with that but this like this was totally fine and everything it just didn't feel like it had that kind of extra cheater there but it's interesting because of how like thick this is when you look at this compared to say an optic with that calf pillow in there this feels like it might be pretty close to the thickness of what that optic was but just the strapping and everything here and how this wears just felt like it played differently than what those other pads do so it didn't really feel like it has that cheating aspect of the calf pillow and with the, all this strapping in here it really felt like it was really connected to your leg so you didn't really have that cheating, like I mentioned for the calf pillow, but it really felt like it was connected all the time. So you lift your knee, the whole pad kind of comes up type thing. It's obviously a personal preference. I like looser pads like this, where if I lift my knee, kind of the rest of the pads a little bit drooping behind. This one definitely feels like it's more, I lift, I move, pad goes with you. Again, personal preference, you have to figure out what style you kind of like. I prefer loose stuff. This is definitely more aimed towards people who like it really tight to your leg and really conforming to your leg. Kind of strapping on here. This is as loose as I can get it. And I, again, talked about that, how I couldn't really get this pad to fit exactly how I wanted. The strapping on here allows this to fit really tightly to your pad. But what I want to talk about here is how quickly the pad kind of raises. And it's like velocities have kind of done this for a while. And so when you do raise, it kind of all comes off in that sense. So it's like you can see just how the pad's coming up there. As for stability, this is 
very similar to the SLR, where this wing right here is so soft. And you can see, you can really feel the pad kind of moving with you when you're stretching and everything like that. So the stability on it is it's Vaughn and it moves a lot with your leg itself, which people are kind of looking for in a Vaughn pad. So it's not like a real negative, it's just an opposite end of the spectrum. Like when you're sliding and stuff like this, the pad is totally fine and it has that integrated knee block. So that block isn't really going anywhere, but you can definitely feel like down here kind of moving with you, especially when you're doing desperation safe, reaching out like this, you can definitely feel this wing, just do it like this, this wing kind of flex with you and move with your leg a lot compared to some other brands. Now we go into here, you can see another piece that's very similar. That's the overall knee block design. That is with an uh, interesting foam right here. I love how they use these like textured foams in here for padding. Now the padding on here feels kind of cool. The padding on here, we'll talk about in a second. This block design is very similar to one another. And this also looks like this is way taller. It's not, it's just the shape of the pad and how it's sitting. They, they actually end up being like the exact same size. But we're gonna open this up. And you can see the differences in terms of the actual block design here, where like the foam padding, how this one wraps around to kind of keep everything in there and this one doesn't. This piece also Velcros out, as you can see, so you can take this out if you want to through there. And I guess you could adjust if you really want to, but back here, there is cord running right through here. So if you wanna remove this padding piece or do something to it, you would undo this cord right here and take that out. On this one, it has that cord right going right through here, but it just goes, I think, inside here and you can't really take this out or it's right here, but this doesn't Velcro off or anything. So you can untouch it, but there's no real like reason to it where this one you could add different foams in there. And if you wanted to, obviously you have your adjustment strapped here and that one just, it fell off, but the same thing where you adjust how tight you want this knee strap based on where it goes here. So both of these pads have that integrated knee block. So this piece, you can see it kind of moving a bit. There are foams right in here. And I'm trying to get this on camera that go into the pad. So right here is a pretty dense foam that goes straight into the pad right there. And obviously it's going on the bottom as well and it doesn't feel like it's on the outside. So it makes sense it can go that way and it kind of stops a bit there, but it's not the stiffest design compared to like some other companies. This one is the same idea where this has pieces going into the face. You can see this one is a bit more stiffer though and a comparison of them, you can see this wobbles a lot more than that one does, but the same general idea of putting that knee block into the face of the pad and the core of the pad to make it more stable so it doesn't push out like this when you push down on it. Then you do have these wings as well, which removable, this one Velcro's in, this one you can just untie with this cord here. Also with these knee blocks, I love the look of these things right here and I like the idea of them and these are just not padded enough. And both of these are. This one feels like it's more padded and you can kind of like, it's like, oh yeah, it's a decent density foam, should give some good landing. But this thing is hard as a rock. This thing is so hard and everything you land in here, like it's just not enough. And then same with this, this piece right here, total plastic rock. This had looks like, oh yeah, it's like decent density in there. It just wasn't enough. I couldn't wear these for two hours straight in my Bauer knee pads. Couldn't wear them back to back days with my Bauer knee pads. I would have to wear an inner padded sleeve and my Bauer knee pads in order to keep wearing these because my knees just hurt too bad after landing on this over and over and over again. And no, I'm not landing off of it and hitting the ice. It's literally landing on this. Ever since I upgraded to my warrior knee pads, they're more cushioned on the landing and I didn't have an issue and I could wear these twice a day, back to like multiple hours a day, back to back days, stuff like that. And it wasn't an issue, but this is way too hard. These are the only pads I've ever had issues with whatsoever. I've worn basically every pad under the sun, except for Axis 2 and <laughs> And these things were just too hard. I don't know if Bond can go deeper here, like more of this, but I really hope they figure out a way to add padding into this to make this softer on both sides. Cause I know there's a max limit for this, for a total height here, but maybe use like a less dense foam here as well. I'm not sure how they're gonna do that. Cause this piece, this is the factor right here. This thing is just so hard and that this foam just isn't enough. So I wanna call it out cause it was very uncomfortable. And then we finally get to the top thigh rise, which is like, I really like this design. It's pretty cool. It shows the carbon off in here. You did have that kind of right here, but these are kind of like pro logos. So you lose some of the sizing and it's custom. So you probably lose that sizing too. Interesting how this one still looks like that old kind of classic with, with the cord through it right here, where this one is that kind of just straight up flat 
design here. So next we are going to look at core stiffness and core stiffness here is across the face like this. Idea here is especially for like a, it shows up in the thigh rise test a lot. Softer pads on here are going to wear out more and are going to become like not straight anymore and pucks are going to be able to jam in there more and go in there more. This is a thing that has been proved massively across the industry since like the optic ones. Optic ones I could fold in half. Uh, v8 I could fold in half. SLR ones I could fold in half. SLR twos I think I could fold in half too. So kind of interesting that companies are kind of going this route and this is kind of the same thing here. I can't remember if the stock SLR is good here. I think it is, but obviously mine are stiffer than stock, but look at that very good stiffness across here. That will help with just dur overall durability and longer lasting of the pad itself up here as well help with keep pucks out over here. And then we look at the V10. We are gonna get very similar results. Very, very stiff overall. That is holding up very well. And that, so that will definitely give you more durability and everything there. So the torsional stiffness of this pad is actually more than what's on the SLR. And remember, this is a stiffer SLR than stock, a lot stiffer, but you can see how much easier it is to push that SLR compared to the velocity, the new V10. So like this thing just kind of flo flips over where this thing is a lot stiffer. This is nowhere near as stiff as like the PX3s, or most like power pads and stuff like that. This is nowhere near what that is. This is now stiffer than what this is. And this was supposed to be their butterfly stiff rebound pad. So as you can see the difference in there, this is kind of changing that idea. So now onto sliding, Vaughn is doing something that is kind of similar to what other companies are doing, but also I think slightly different. Core Tech, which are core shorts, and people have heard of these before. They were labeled under Under Armour before. Now Bauer sells hockey specific one, but Core themselves sell their own line of pants and supportive clothing and apparel. Basically this stuff helps you with growing strains, growing pulls and helps keep your hips tight and everything like that. And speaking of injuries, I kind of pulled a growing playing in the playoffs a few months ago and have had to keep using these Cortec shorts to make sure my growing doesn't get worse. When I don't wear them, I can feel and it hurts kind of to walk the next day with these. Keeps everything nice and tight and keeps everything from stretching out too far and getting injured. So these have been a huge savior for me. Check out the link in the description to their website and use my coupon code that's in there to get a discount and I'll put it on the screen here. It helps support myself and the channel so I can make you content and doing real reviews, but also you get a solid product that I use all the time and basically am needed in order to keep my growing from falling apart. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel without buying anything, check out the links in the description to Patreon and buy me a coffee. Everything through those links always comes back into the channel so I can make more content and doing more reviews. Because other companies are going the route of making all of this stuff as firm as possible as well. Making, so there's like no give. So when you drop and you slide, there's no softness here that might dampen the force being pushed on the pad. Vaughn went the whole, we have quick slide, it's better than everything else. We don't really need to do that. And they're totally right. This is the best, both of these pads are the best sliding pads on the market. That's just how it is. I've worn like all the other pads out there. We'll see how Hyperlite 2s are. From my experience, mock and everything, and like the brine just don't slide as well as this. There's a coating that is on this quick slide that makes it just fly on the ice. Even the Warrior with the plastic cap doesn't slide as good as these, these slide better. The closest thing I have to this is when you put like PPF film on the whole thing and then it slides like crazy, but this is more consistent and it's across the whole leg as you can see. And it's just, it's absolutely nuts. I have to give Vaughn a ton of credit for it. These pads are a dream to move in and you have to kind of stop yourself sometimes, but that isn't a bad thing. I always use the analogy of driving a car and you need to accelerate fast to get on the highway. Do you want 800 horsepower or 150? You want 800. Now you have to be able to control that 800 and you might have to not press on the gas all the way. So you have to kind of control your slides and everything, but you want the ability to have all that power and all that speed whenever it's available. And Vaughn definitely brings that with the quick slide. It is fantastic. Awesome for sliding around and just nothing can beat it right now. That's just how it is. Now we're going to go on to the weight of this pad. And this is where I always say weight doesn't matter in terms of actual grams and everything in there because it really doesn't. This pad does not feel very light. It actually feels like one of the heavier pads that I have. And kind of same with this pad. It doesn't feel super, super light. But with that said, it is a lot about the balance as well. So if I lift it up by the boot, it feels heavy. If I lift it up by the thigh rise, it feels heavy. If I lift it up right here, it feels a lot lighter because of where the balance of this pad is. And the balance being right here means it's all on your leg and your knee, which is where you want it to be. You don't want it on the boot. Feet are full, like coming behind. You don't want the thigh rise. So the thigh rise is kind of tipping and lagging behind because there's nothing behind it. You do want it to feel there. So this pad felt totally fine on the ice. It didn't feel crazy light or anything whatsoever, but it felt fine. It felt normal and it 
was comfortable to wear in that sense. So overall, not crazy light. It's not really what they're going for. They stiffen things up. They made it more durable. They made it better for puck seal and everything like that. Doing that makes things heavier, but overall balance was solid and I had no issues with fatigue in terms of pad weight itself. I did have issues with fatigue in terms of strapping because these straps were too tight for the first few skates and it just killed my leg. Felt like it was cutting off circulation. It's just not what I, the feeling I like. So once I removed these straps totally, that fatigue in my legs totally went away. So it wasn't an issue whatsoever. So it wasn't a pad weight thing. It was just the strapping was wrong and caused issues. Overall, I think Vaughn has a very interesting pad here and I really like what they did with the V10. While I still don't really like that boot shape and everything that's going on there the rest of the pad and especially like what's happening up here is a huge huge improvement for the velocity line and is going to help a ton with with seal durability as well with these thighs as well as it is kind of just making it a little bit more modern of a style of pad and i think and honestly that's kind of the way goaltending is going and i think this gives basically the best soft face pad offering there still is i have palace px pads and they're super stiff all around i love them this pad just feels like it's a pretty big departure from that too just the whole like everything down here just feels way softer than what is on those px3s and it just feels like a very different pad this feels still like a velocity pad just with a different boot and it's stiffer up here so i'm a pretty big fan of i'm a pretty big fan of vaughn kind of doing a nice hybrid of the two and making this what it is because let's be totally honest and people will hate me for saying this but it's gonna happen anyways the velocity line especially like with that thigh rise and how i showed that previously and i i never got to test the nines but those issues i've showed with like the stock slr pad needed to improve and it did improve and it, these are way better and they're pretty very very solid for what that is i really wish i got to try these in a 33 just to actually really play with them with my knee landing in the proper spot because i have a feeling i'd really like wearing these pads a lot more than i did it was all because of the sizing the sliding on these is fantastic the seal was great they were sized right on me and it fit my leg a little bit better i'd be able to move a lot better and i really feel like they're a really solid mix of that stiff pad that i like while still having a lot of that older more agile type like softer features in it easy recommendation to people who want that like softer type of pad but want a little bit more modern in it with this thigh and everything like that pretty interesting pad definitely check it out but check out for sizing always be wary of that sizing so that's about it for this video thank you very much for watching hopefully it was helpful huge thank you to jess hawk for making this video possible along with all the other videos i have on the vaughn gear check them out in the description to their instagram page and their website make a purchase through them let them know you came from me greatly appreciate it. let them know the videos like these are helpful to them as well if you want to see me review specific gear let me know in the comments if this video was helpful and you made you buy a vaughn gear please let vaughn know through like social media or like tag them and, and stuff and say hey hockey reviews video was really helpful and i ended up buying a gear for, from you because that would be greatly appreciated as well check out all the other videos on the gear i reviewed the whole set as well did thyroid tests so make sure you check those out they will be in the script description as well remember to subscribe to me on youtube follow me on instagram and tiktok links are in the description for that if you want to support the channel you can check out patreon buy me a coffee everything that goes through those links always comes back into the channel so i can keep buying gear and do more reviews it's kind of rare for me to get a chance to use demo sets like this so i have to buy a lot of the gear and that would be greatly appreciated for that support thank you very much for watching and take it easy you're watching hockeyreviews.ca